Go on, draw. You ain't got nothing. Hutch Precinct Police Station. Sergeant Harris talking. Double peanut for yeah. 300. Hey, hey, wait yeah. a minute. Where'd you get that 300 that? business? That only counts 80. Shut up, you guys, till I get this. You're What's crazy. That? I didn't meld them separate. Yeah. Separate or together, yeah. it only counts 80. Yeah. What are you doing, Wilson? Oh, don't be like There's that. There's been a fight down in Spelvin's Cafe. Somebody's hurt bad. Get going. Go on, call up Rudy Schultz over the corner's office. We'll see what he tells you. I don't Who's care what Rudy Schultz said. I say it counts yeah. 300. You owe me 42 cents. Right. Go on, I don't owe you a nickel. You owe me 42 cents. Get it on, you guys. Old Thady is Parker's son. He's liable to die. And me with 150 trunks. What good had it done you? You wouldn't know how to play oh, them anyway. Them. Call up Rudy you know, Schultz. Listen, I don't care if Rudy Schultz invented Pinochle. Look it up in the book. Oh, yeah? Yes. Well, Rudy wrote the book. Well, that 300 book. business. All right, Jim Spelman's cafe. I'll tell you something about Pinochle. Now, if you leave the thing. Say, listen. When we get back off this call, I'm going to have Rudy draw you up a set of rules. I don't care about Rudy's rules. By my rules, you owe me 42 cents. That's you all over. Arbitrary. I don't know what arbitrary means, but you still owe me 42 cents. Hi, Spelvin. I don't know how to get in. Didn't see a thing. If the thing was orderly. Keep your shirt on, Tony. We'll get to you. How is he, Doc? Oh, hello, Doyle. Maybe you'll pull through, but I wouldn't bet on it. What is he hit with? A water bottle. Hmm. Who done it? The kid over there. Drinking? Yep. Parker and the kid both. How about a kid? I don't know. We were just dancing, and I didn't mean to do it. I didn't... Oh, yeah, sure. The bottle just slipped out of your hand. Oh, no, sir. He kept putting his hands on her and... I've got nothing to do with it. I'm going to get out of here. Oh, no, sister. Stick around. Well, what for? I hardly know these people. Oh, you've got plenty of other witnesses, and besides, I don't feel very well. That's too bad. Come on, let's go. Oh, but let me call my house. I want to get my lawyer. I bet you keep that guy pretty busy. Huh? Yeah. If you don't want to take my word for it, I'll get you 18 other guys to prove that I'm right. That'd be 18 steps to say, please. Come on. Come on. Come on. Break him out. Come on. Clear out. I don't he care don't. what Rudy Schultz told you. You owe me 42 cents, and I want my money. That's her big trouble. All right. That. Pull down the shade. What's your name? Reuben Fontaine. What's your real name? Gertrude. Gertrude what? Gertrude Williams. Yeah. Ever been arrested? Oh, no, sir. Honest, I haven't. All right, I'll take your word for that. Now, tell me everything that happened last night, and don't make any mistakes. Yes, sir. Well, I was just walking down the street. What street? What time? Market Street, about 11 o'clock. I was only looking in the store windows. Yeah, and go on. And the young man came up and spoke to me. Ever seen him before? Oh, no, sir. Honest, I hadn't. Go on. Well, at first I was insulted. Never mind that stuff. All I want is the facts. What did he say? He said he'd only been in town a short time, and it was his birthday, and he was lonesome. And would I go someplace to dance with him? I didn't see any harm in that. Huh. Ever see that before? Yes, sir. That—that's what he hit him with. Where'd you see it? 
at Spelvin's. Who suggested that joint? He did. And he learned his ropes pretty quick for not being in town long, eh? Guess he did. Now, who suggested that joint? I don't remember. Maybe I did. Yeah. That's possible. All right, go on. Well, we danced a while, and we had some ginger ale. Nothing else? Some gin. Where'd you get the gin? The waiter brought it. Oh, you knew the waiter. You'd been there before. He got it for you. Is that it? Yes, sir. But anybody can get gin there. Yeah, but the boy didn't have it. He didn't know. That was your idea. Yes, sir. But we both drank it. Yeah. All right, go on. This, this Mr. Parker got fresh with me on the floor. You knew Parker? I'd seen him. Ever been out with him? Yeah. All right, what did he do? He wanted me to come over to his table. When I wouldn't, he got sore, and he called me a name. That's what started everything. The young boy I was with, he said, you've insulted this lady. He meant me. And then Mr. Parker reached back into his hip pocket. It was just for his handkerchief. He didn't have nothing else. And then the boy, the boy picked that up. And he struck him before anybody could stop him. He was screaming like a madman. Gee, I did my best all to... All right, Gary, that's all. Come back here at 5 o'clock. Yes, sir. Gertie, don't do any talking. Keep your mouth shut. Yes, sir. And all the witnesses, Lou? Me, five, six, seven. Yes, that's all. Seven witnesses, and they all check on material points. Open and shut, eh? Like a knife. Yeah? Yeah. No, I can't tell yet. Call me up at 6 o'clock, and I'll give you a statement. Yeah, goodbye. Yellow press. How oh, they love the smell of blood. Yeah. They're all alike. They'll squeal themselves deaf over this. An old fed Parker spends more money on advertising than any man in this town. That's right, Mr. Brady. I never thought of that. Yeah. And an election coming on. <laughs> Bring the boy in. Yes, sir. All right. You. Come on. Wait out here, Mike. Oh, yeah. What's the matter? You think we're asleep down here? I'm, I'm taking personal charge of the case. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be lucky if he doesn't hang. Yeah, goodbye. Sit down, kid. I'd, I'd rather stand. Have a cigar? No, thank you. Cigarette? No, sir. Won't you smoke? Well, yes, sir, but I, I don't care to now. Yeah? What's your name? Robert Graham. Yeah? You ever call you Bob? Yes, sir. How old are you, Bob? I was 20 yesterday. Well, you celebrated, didn't you? Stranger in town? I've been here a month. My home's in Hood Valley. Yeah? What you been doing here? Well, I... I was a clerk at Price and Hatton's, the broker. Any friends here? Parents living? My mother. Yeah? Have you been arrested before? No, sir, I haven't. Yeah? Well, Bob, you're in a jam. Yes, sir. Young Parker died this afternoon. Like a little drink? No, sir. Have you got a lawyer? Well, the firm I work for sent their lawyer to see me this morning. Yeah? What did he say? He... He told me not to talk. Yeah? Then don't you say a word. You haven't said anything yet that'll do you any harm. 
Please, sir, w what do you think? Tough luck, Bob, but that's the way things go. That's the way they break sometimes. You gotta take them the way they fall. Yes, sir. Kid's got a nice personality. Smart criminal lawyer like Shapiro or Sullivan could make it tough for us. That's right, Mr. Brady. Say, if that kid belonged to me, I'd make a plea of self-defense and fight it out. Parker didn't have a gun. Thought he had. He thought he was fighting for his life. It's what you think that counts. And he was full of gin. Suppose he was. What of it? I'd get a disagreement at worst. A year delay, a new trial. The witnesses would fade away. They always do. The whole mess would get cold. The papers would have something else to yap about. I'd get him off. He'd never serve a day. I guess you could, Mr. Brady. Yeah. A thing like this liable to happen to anyone. You or me or anyone. It's just a rotten break, that's all. Yeah. Graham's attorney, Mr. Brady. All right, show him in. Well, Lou, you better get those notes transcribed. Okay. Call up the newspapers and tell them we promise a quick conviction and, uh... Uh, well, you know, the usual baloney. Yes, sir. Mr. Brady? Yeah. I am uh, Leonard Nettleford of Nettleford, Lambskin, and Crow. Pleased to meet you, sir. Sit down. Thank you. Have a smoke? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, we are attorneys, Mr. Brady, uh, for Price and Hatton, the stockbroker. Yeah? It appears that a young man who has been in their employ uh, is involved in an unfortunate affair. Yeah? Uh, Mr. Price asked me, as a personal favor, to interest myself in the case. Well, I'm glad you came over, Mr. Nettleford. I'll be perfectly frank with you. That's my way of doing business. Thank you very much. Now, the case, as I see it, is, uh, is open and shut like a knife. The boy Graham picks up a uh, frail on the street. Uh, I uh, beg your pardon? Frail. Jane. The gal. Uh, oh, oh, yes. He takes her to Spelman, the notorious joint. It's a drunken brawl. Graham kills Parker. Confirmed by the statement of seven or more eyewitnesses. We're going to ask for a verdict of second-degree murder. Murder? Dear me, Mr. Brady, that, that sounds very hard. It's the law of the state. You'll find it in the code. Uh, I have not had occasion to consult the criminal code in 20 years. Well, the criminal code is my Bible, Mr. Nettleford. Uh, yes, uh, I suppose so. <laughs> uh, but uh, this boy... Uh, this poor unfortunate boy, he, uh, he meant no harm, Mr. Brady. It was an accident. He is sorry. Yes, he's sorry, and Parker's dead. Uh, yes, yes, I, I, I quite understand that. Uh, but uh, a misunderstanding, an, an unguarded moment. These wretched things do happen. Perhaps you have a boy of your own, Mr. Brady. No, I have a girl. Uh, yes, yes. Well, it seems very high. Tell you what I'll do, Mr. Nettleford. If you want to plead him guilty to manslaughter, I'll let it go at that. Uh, manslaughter, though. Just what does that involve? Maximum sentence of ten years. Well, ten years is a long time, Mr. Brady. It's a big piece out of a boy's life. Good Lord, man, what do you want? There's a boy lying on a slab in the morgue. There's a big piece out of his life. All of it. But somebody's got to pay for that. An eye for an eye. That's the basis and foundation of the criminal code. Somebody's got to pay. But drunkenness is no excuse for the violation of the law. Therefore, according to the just verdict of this jury, I sentence you, Robert Graham, to serve a term of 10 years in state's prison. Next case. Your Honor, the next case is ready to take corporal. My boy, I'm sorry. All right, son. Come on. Well, Mr. Brady, the best man won, I'm afraid. Yeah. And I, 
I want to thank you for all your courtesy. That's all right. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Locking up the animals for the night. What are you thinking about, kid? Uh, I was just figuring out how many hours there are in six years. 52,560, in case it interests you. Tomorrow will be 24 more. Wouldn't it be swell if you could sleep for a year at a time? What's the matter, kid? Ah, oh, it's a jute mill. Noise and the rotten, filthy dust. No. You ought to be used to it by now. Used to it? I'll never get used to it. You can wash it out of your ears and your nose. How do they expect you to wash it out of your lungs? <laughs> oh, that's where I get a break. I've only got one lung left. Scram. Check his kid? No. Oh. oh, come on, sit in, sit in. It'll do you good. Forget it. It's tough, I, I know it's tough. But for young, take a slant at me. Here I am on the shady side of 40, at the start of a 20-year stretch. How many hours is that? Never mind, never mind, you don't have to figure them out. I'm not going to stay half a minute here. Let me tell you guys something. I'm going to make a break for it. You are? I know. It's my only chance. When? I don't know. A crush out takes time. But I'm going. And I'm going soon. Take me with you, Jim. Now, wait a minute, kid. It's a long shot. A gamble. Nine out of ten come back. Yeah. And eight out of the nine come back on a stretcher. I don't care. If I can just get one breath of air outside. If I can get one good square meal. If I could just see a woman's face again. I'd dream about those things, Jim. Night after night. Oh, dreams. How about you, Galloway? Not me. I got an appointment with a guy. What do you mean? Did you know I was in for 20 years, don't you? Yes. Well, I done eight. They let me out on parole. And I went into a speakeasy. I wanted to wash the taste of this slop they call the blub out of my mouth. I had a drink. Just one. And somebody saw me take that drink and squeaked. They sent me back for the rest of my joke. Just for it? Yeah. Twelve years for one lousy glass of beer. Well, the guy that squealed is in here, too. I 
got an appointment with him and 12 years to keep it in. Shh! School. Telegram. Oh, maybe it's an invitation to a party. Your move, kid. She... She you, used to come to see me every Friday. My mother was awful nice. Your move, kid. You know what she wanted to do? She wanted to come down here and live with me somehow. What do they want to punish her for? Oh, she knew it wasn't your fault. She knew your being in here was a rotten deal, didn't she? Sure she did. That's what killed her. Your move, kid. I'm human, ain't I? That was my mother, wasn't it? I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out! Steady, kid, steady. Your move. There right, it's my move. It's my move out of here. I'm gonna get out. You'll get out in a box of police and here's you. Oh, that's great. That's where my mother is, isn't it? In a box. They put her there. Listen. Listen, listen. That's what I've been doing for six years. I'm sick and tired of listening. I'm going to get out. Wake up. Wake up. Now they're all going to hear me. Hey, let me in. Give me Joseph. Here's my mother. My mother. Stop. Why are you in there? I'm sorry I yell like that, Captain, but I felt sick, see? Don't lie to me. It wasn't you. Cut out that Christian martyr stuff and kick that rat over to me. Oh, listen, Captain. It was just hysterics. We've got him under control now. He'll be all right. Yeah, well, no con under me can yowl that way and throw this pen into a panic. Kick him over here. Come in and get him. Please, Captain, please. The kid got bad news. His mother died. Yeah? Well, another yap out of this cell and all three of you will go into the hole. Okay, get the wall. You don't like that fella Gleason, do you? He's the guy I got the appointment with. No kidding. Mr. Boyle. Did I yammer? You sure did. Ten of baritone and bass. Who hit me? Brother Galloway. Well, thanks, Cass. Okay, kid. Got a cigarette, kid.
say, Mac. Says here that Brady comes in tomorrow. Wonder what kind of a warden he'll make. A tough one, I'll bet. Yeah, and he ought to be in a sweet frame of mind after losing out for governor. I'll bet he runs these cons ragged. And won't they like it? <laughs> Especially coming from him. Say, that's right. I never thought of that. Hey, Orange, did you hear the screws? Yeah, I ain't missing nothing, Tex. That's the guy that sent me up. Yeah, me too. Railroaded me for doing nothing. One. Hmm. Hey, guys, ready to come tomorrow. Our pal. How you gonna like being butler to the war now? Not so bad. I guess you'll be glad to see your old friend, eh, kid? Oh, I don't care. I used to lie awake nights figuring how I'd get that guy. Now, oh, what difference does it make? He might as well be warden as anyone else. Yeah? Well, there's others don't feel the same way. Yeah. Yeah, he's here. All right. New warden's here, Captain. You wanted up in the office. Okay. McManus, how's the prison board this morning? Fine, thanks. This is your new boss, Mr. Brady. Mart, this is Gleason, best yard captain in the prison business. Glad to know you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Meet my daughter. How do you do? Oh, I'm pleased to meet you. The housekeeper, Miss Ryan. Pleased to meet you. How do you do? Look here, Mart. There's your boys down there. Yeah? Mary. 2,500 of them. Right, Gleason? 2,552, uh, Mr. McManus. That mob, I'll bet you sent up about uh, a thousand of them yourself, Mark. Did you ever think of that? Yeah. Tex, there's Brady now up in the window. Yeah, he yelled all right. I wish he'd come down here. Yes, he sent me up too. Me too. My friend. My yeah! Yeah! Listen, they call that yammering thing. They do it when they're sore about something or somebody. Yeah? You better go down. I'll go with you. I wouldn't go if I were you, Mark. Better stay here. Yeah, why? Sounds like this show was staged for your benefit. That's right, Mr. Brady. I have a hunch that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. kind of a protest, eh? Yeah. won't be very welcome down there, Mark. Better let Gleason go. Yeah? Well, let me tell you something. I've been taking the taxpayers' money for a long time. When my name was on the district attorney's door, I was district attorney. It was my job to get convictions, and I got it. If I'd been elected governor, I'd have governed. Maybe that's why I wasn't elected. Well, here I am, warden. And that's what I'm going to be. Warden. 
All right, sweetheart. Yes, Dad. Uh, wait a minute, Mr. Brady. I'll get some darts and machine guns and we'll... Now you stay here, Gleason. This seems to be a matter between me and the boys down there. We've got to settle it ourselves. I don't like this, Mr. McManus. Go on down there, Gleason. Yes, sir. Hello, Tex. Hi, Mr. Brady. Are you 
you've worked. Jute Mill. How long have you been there? Six years. Hmm. You can go. Jute Mill. Six years. Well, Doctor? I wish to speak with you about a prisoner. Yeah? I don't like to trouble you with the cases that come before me. They're nearly all alike. But this one is different. This is a case of a man in the jute mill. A boy, in fact. And he is breaking down. What do you mean? I mean, uh, morale. Yeah? Why? Why? Who can tell? Environment. Mechanical occupation. Starvation and the lack of the other half of the world. Heaven knows what. Yeah? It is all down on this car, uh, the physical part of it. I have seen this boy, Warren. His character, I mean. Only a glimpse that's true, but I have seen it. He isn't a criminal at all. A casual offender, perhaps, but far from hopeless. Pity. A great pity. There is something there that is worth saving. And it's almost gone. Graham. Robert Graham. Yeah? Well, what do you want me to do? I would suggest a change of occupation or environment. Yeah? I think you should see this boy yourself, Warden. All right, I'll see him. Set him up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Twenty-five, four, sixty-five, Warden. Yeah. Go on, get over there. Doctor Reinwolf said you wanted him brought here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Your name is Robert Graham. Ever call you Bob? You asked me that once before. Huh? It's a Parker case, Mr. Brady. Parker? Yeah, young Parker who was killed six years ago. We're having tea, Dad. Huh? Oh, you're getting pretty stylish, aren't you, Mary? Yes. All right, Al. I'll be there in a little while. Change of occupation and environment. Drive a car, son? Yes. Yeah. Oh, hello, Doctor. How do you do, Miss Mary? How's Katie? Oh, she's all right. We'll have her out tomorrow. Summer cold. Uh, no, she isn't young anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think the prison depresses her. Yes, I know. Poor dear. You don't uh, seem to mind it. I? Why should I? Mm, why should you, indeed? You know, I want to congratulate you on the good influence you have here. How's that? 
A miracle you have performed. Miracle? The reconstruction of a man. I don't think I quite understand you. I mean, the man who drives your father's car. Oh. Well, what have I to do with that? It's a strange phenomenon. It takes a prison six years to break a man, and something mends him in three short months. And is he mended, do you think? What shall I do with these, Miss Mary? Oh, you can put them all in the kitchen, Graham. Is he mended? Take a look into his eyes sometime, and then tell me. May I help you with anything? Oh, well, I think Galloway will... Well, Galloway's off today, miss. Everybody's down at the ball field. Oh, yes, this is the day of the game, isn't it? Well, I think we'll peel some potatoes for me. Sure. Here's a knife. Thank you. Don't you like baseball, Graham? Well, yes, miss. I played with the Hood Valley Club, but... we had a pretty good team the last year. Really? be out there today. Be good for you. I wish you'd told me I could have driven the car just for one day. Oh, no, no. I'd rather drive it myself. Why do you say that? Am I such a terrible driver, Graham? Oh, no, I, I, I didn't mean that, but I think perhaps it's good for me to drive the car. It might help me later on. You mean you might make your living driving the car? Well, I don't know just how I am going to make my living. I've thought a lot about it, too. Do you, do you think it'll make much difference to people? What? That I've, that I've been in prison. I don't see why it should. When the thing's over, it's done. Well, that's my idea, too, but they don't seem to think that in here. They say that's why so many who go out come back. Would, would it make much difference to you? No, I, I don't think it would. I think you better let me finish those, Graham. All right, miss. Oh, Graham, by the way, about a week ago, I lost a handkerchief, one with a blue border. You didn't happen to see it, did you? Why, I, um... It was from my aunt. I'd hate to lose it. Well, oh, I'm sorry, miss. i better put the car away and... Graham. I'd like to have my handkerchief, please. But I... Please. I'm 69, two. I'm 70. Remember I told you about making a break for it? Sure. Well, everything's set for tomorrow night. Do you still want to go with me? Well, no, Jim. I... Oh, I understand. you got something to stay for. Jim, who else is in on it? Three of us. Tex, Runch, and me. Runch? I'm not wild about it myself, but Tex let him in. It's too late now. Listen, Jim, that guy's a stool pigeon. He's no good. Just as wrong as they make him. Well, he's too dangerous to leave behind. Yeah. Just how you going to work him? Well. We got a con in the turnkey's office. 
to take our numbers off the cell book. And tomorrow night when the bell goes, while they're checking up... I don't know. Why didn't he meet us here? I don't know. Tex, are you sure of that guy? Come on, let's get out of here. 169, 2. 172. 172. 172. 172. They've got a chance now. Yeah. I wish that guy Runch wasn't in it. for walking, Tex. Yeah, cause Ron squealed. Come on inside. Nice and warm. Nice, cozy dungeon. Come on, take him down. All right, Tex. This morning, aren't you, Barbara? Yes, sir. I was at the funeral chapel this morning, sir. Oh, yeah. For fails, eh? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I guess the boys feel pretty badly about that, don't they? Yes, sir. Nobody likes a squealer. Yeah. But I know you. You do. Mm, your name is uh, Red Fleischner, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Lifer, eh? I am. Mm hmm I sent you up, didn't I? You did. What for? For cutting the guy's throat. Tickle to death. You're a hero. The way you stopped that attempt to, uh, well, I'm telling you, they won't be able to keep you in this dump much longer. <laughs> You'll go up where you belong, the governor's mansion. Well, maybe it'll break like that. Maybe it will at that. Oh, Thaddeus Parker with all his dough can't keep you down, Mark. A thousand? Uh, never mind, uh, Barbara. I want to talk to Mr. McManus. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Say, do you know who that barber is? Yeah, sure I do. <laughs> you better lay off and grow a beard. Hey, uh, you got the report for the board ready? You'll find it there on my desk, Mac. Well, good. Hey, Mark. What have you done to that guy that squealed? Who, Runch? Yeah. Say, so listen, you gotta get him off my hands. Pardon, parole, transfer, anything. Well, I'll do what I can. Where is he? Well, I got him in here as my clerk. Sleeps in the alcove there, and I have his food sent in. Doesn't set a foot outside. Oh, that's a good idea. You can't be too careful. That guy's life wouldn't be worth a nickel if those other birds got at him. Isn't worth a nickel anyway. He's petrified, scared stiff. Like a rabbit in a trap. Yeah. Hurts me to look at him. Had him here since the day before yesterday, but he's gotten on my nerves. Can't sleep at night thinking of him. You gotta get him out of here, Mac. Now you gotta do it. I know exactly how you feel. It would be bad for you to have a killing now. 
Just when you're on the crest of the wave and ringing up a good record, why, the newspapers would turn on you like that. My manager's not only that. I'm responsible. I'm responsible for that man's life. I'll do all I can. In the meantime, Mark, I think I'd get rid of Mary for a few days, you know, just uh, until this thing blows over. I thought of that myself. I'm going to send her up to Aunt Ellen's for a week. Ah, that's a good idea. Now, i got to beat it. Hey, Mac, don't forget to work on that parole for Graham. No, I won't. Mac. Yeah? Next time you come up, you can bring me a safety razor, will you? Huh? Oh, oh all right. So long. So long, Mac. Hello, Gats. Hello, Pete. Will you tell Miss Mary the car's here? Seems to me you're kind of enjoying your job. Sure I am. Why not? Yeah? Well, your real friends are still inside. I know that. Yeah, well, don't forget. I won't. You know, Jim thought a lot of you. That's why I'm giving you the office. Watch your step. What do you mean? I mean that someone's going to get that rotten squealer. Who, Roger? Who else? But he didn't know what he was saying. Gleason. I know, I know. But he squealed. Turned up his pals and a man's dead. Somebody's got to pay for that. But how? How should I know? I'm only tipping. Something in the wind. So watch your step unless you want to get into a jam. I don't. I don't. But what? How? Keep clear of him and the corridor. I will. Thanks, Gary. Graham? Yes, miss. Is there anything you'd like to have me do in town for you? No, miss. Thank you. No one you'd like to have me see? Not now. My mother's dead. Oh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. She used to come to see me every week. It sort of kept my courage up. Something to look forward to. Yes. Afterwards, I began to slip a little. It's awfully hard to make yourself believe that it's worthwhile to try. And you've got to do that, otherwise you'll break. They all think they got a rotten deal in there, and that's all they talk about. It gets under your skin in time and fills you with a bitterness, hate. Are you bitter? No, not now. I was, but I seem to see things more clearly now. You know... My father's trying to get you a parole. Yes, I know. I'm awfully grateful, but it doesn't seem to matter so much now. Why do you say that? I... I mean, if, if you stay. You know you don't mean that. Yes, yes, I do. Things aren't the way they were before at all. If I can just see you every day. Just see you. Gone long? Only a week. Goodbye, Miss Mary. Goodbye, Bob. What's on your mind, Gleason? Plenty. Yeah? There's trouble brewing. Altogether too quiet out there since Fales got it. 
quiet, eh? Yes, no talking, no laughing. That's a bad sign, sir. Of course, I'm not giving them much chance to think it over. The guards have orders to keep them moving, but I don't like it. Yeah? Now watch them. They'll gang up as soon as the guard passes on. Levat, what did I tell you? Yeah, wake up the night detail. Get them out. Arm them with rifles and put them with your regular men. Better put a couple of sub Thompsons up there too. Yes, sir. Gleason. Post an extra guard at the gate leading up here. Yes, sir. Set the time for 2.15. Tip the gang off and watch your step. Ranch, 2.15. Get going. Cut that out. You ought to know better than that. in the turnkey's office, sir. Think it likely they'd walk past my guards and climb my private stairs? No, sir. There's no one beyond there except my servants. Do you think they'd risk their easy jobs to say nothing of their necks for you? Come on, pull yourself together. No one can harm you here. But they'll get me, sir. They'll get me. I know they will. How? I don't know that. I wish I did. Oh, can't you get me out of here, sir? Doing all I can. I never meant to squeal. I couldn't help myself. I didn't know what I was saying. I was framed. Oh, you you got to get me out of here. I'm doing all I can, I tell you. A guy that squeals ought to have a break. A chance to save his life. A run for it. It's, it's like the death house. Waiting here. Uh, you're off your nut. Oh, you, you ought to get me out of here. I beat it down for South America, and I'd, I'd never come back here again. I swear I wouldn't, Warden. Oh, give me a break. A chance. All right, Ron, you can go. Take those along with you. Well, Bob, Miss Mary, get off all right? Yes, sir. You told me you wanted me to come back here, sir. Yeah, that's right. Sit down. I want to talk to you about a parole I've been trying to get. You know, it isn't as easy as it sounds. There's over 2,500 men in here, and they all want me to do something. Yes, sir. Ranch 215. Ranch 215. Ranch 215. Ranch 215. Oh. Tea, madam. I wish you wouldn't sneak up on me like that. Great conscience, I'd rather do the work around here myself than have you around. I never see you coming, I never hear you coming. I just look up and, and there you are. I didn't order that, but I'll take it so long as it's here. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? 
Bowman. Wait here till I come back. Don't go away. Some more tea, madam? Thanks.
Some more tea, madam. Some more tea, madam. No, thanks. No, sir, it isn't. It drives the guards nearly crazy. Sometimes they keep it up all night, kicking about the grub or something. Yeah. And the cigar, Gleason? Yeah, thanks. What do you make of it? I don't know, sir. Sometimes it's just pure orneriness. Then again, they pull a stunt like that to cover up something. Cover something. Downstairs, quick. See the two guards at the gate. Get the fingerprint man up here right away. Okay, sir. You didn't do this, did you, Bob? Oh, no, sir. Who did? I. Who did it? I don't know. Yeah? How long have you been sitting in here, Katie? Ever since Mary went to the train. You haven't been out of this room, not for an instant? Why, no. Why? Anybody go through here toward my office? No. How about Galloway, the butler? Galloway brought me some tea, but he went back into the kitchen. Yeah, you're sure about that? Yes. Why? Yeah. Hmm. below don't know anything about it, sir. They didn't see anybody come up and they didn't see anybody go down. But they slipped across the corridor to get a look when the noise started. Yeah, then somebody could have used those stairs. That's the way it looks to me. They yeah, will round up Galloway and all my private servants for bloodstains. Yes, sir. Quick, before they get a chance to get them off. Okay. Who did it, son? I don't know. You can't get away with that. You were in this room when that man was killed. No, no, sir, I wasn't here. What? I wasn't here. I went. Went where? Nowhere. What do you mean? Nothing. I. Nothing. And yet you say you don't know who did it. You're lying, Bob. You're lying to shield a murderer. What are you going to tell them at the inquest? Inquest? What are you going to tell them? What are you going to tell a coroner's jury, Bob? Nothing. You can't get away with that. The long arm of the law reached right through these gates and yanked you outside. It'll put you in a county jail. I got no jurisdiction then. I'll be just a witness in the box. What can I do? I know you didn't do it, Bob, but that won't prove it to them. They'll hang on you. No, no, they can't. Oh. Sit down, kid. Sit down. Come on, kid, now out with it. Out with it. Who did it? I can't tell. A man can do anything but squeal. I'll have to take my chance. Chance? You haven't got a chance. You're caught. You're in a net. You'll have to clear this up to save yourself. I can't. You must think fast. It may mean 10 or 20 years at best. I couldn't stand it. No, I'd rather die. Parole's up in town. It's due here any day. The prison board will cancel that. I didn't kill him. I've done nothing wrong. Time you've served for good behavior will be lost. That leaves you three more years to serve. Three years at least. It isn't fair. It isn't right. Come on, Bob. I can't keep you here with me. You'd go back to the jute mill. You... Oh, no, no. You haven't forgotten the smell of jute in six short months? No. You see, boy, you're... you're up against it. You've got to tell. Who killed that man? Come on, Bob, think fast. Who killed him now? Who, who, quick, who? Yeah. Yeah. And just tell me which way he came. From over there? Or there, Bob? You can't be doing any harm by that. I know he came one way or the other. It's just a detail that I'd like to know. From over there, Bob? 
Okay. Come on, be reasonable. It won't be violating your code to tell me that. I don't know. Yeah? You believe that I'm your friend and want to help you? I don't know. Well, I am. I swear I am. I haven't got another thought in this but you. I've got lots to lose myself. I was warden of that man. His safety was my job. His blood is on my head. The press will make me sweat for this, and there's an election coming on, but I'm not thinking of that, understand? Yes. And things have been tough for you. It was a rotten piece of luck that sent you here. You've got another now, but that's the way things break sometimes, you know? You've got to take them away they fall. See what I mean? Yeah. You see, you're up against it, boy. You're up against the wall. You're up against it stark and flat. There's only one out for you. You've got to tell. You've got to tell, Bob. Come on, now. Who killed that man, huh? Come on. Won't you, won't you come through? I can't. You trade your life away for a code made up by murderers and crooks to cheat the laws of honest men. You're not a crook. That's not your code. It's all I've had. No, no. This is your code and mine. Hold fast to it, Bob. You can't be faithful to them both. Stick to the law. Don't turn a crook. You're not one. Don't turn your back on this. Come on, Bob. Who killed that man? No, I can't tell. I can't. I can't forget so quickly what I've learned in here. I can't go back on the code. I think their code's right for them. And I can't go back on it. No. Why, I wouldn't be anything then. Don't you see? I, I'd be like that thing in there. No. Yeah. Well, what did you find, Beeson? Nothing. What did he say? Nothing. Well, we'll take that out of him. Come on. Wait a minute, son. I'll give you one more chance. Your parole will be here next week. You'll be outside these walls, free. Free to make a future for yourself. Free to come and go where you please. A home, a wife, kids. Free. Yeah? Or rot right here in this cage for three or ten or twenty years. A rope around your neck, perhaps. The jute mill every day. Year in, year out. The smell of it that makes you sick. Jute! Jute! The dungeon now. A bucket meal each seven days. Cold slop with bread and water in between. No ray of light. No human voice. Black emptiness, that's all. Come on, Bob. No, oh, for what? For what? The prison rules. A prisoner must obey. Who killed that man? Come on! Who killed him? Who? Who? Huh? Yeah. All right, Beeson, lock him up. All right, come on, on your way. Come on, get out. He won't be so cocky in a week. Ain't no rough stuff with that boy. Let no one lay a hand on him, understand? All right. I've got to save him. I've got to save him from himself. He's got to tell. He must, he must. Sure, a week of bread and water in the dark will loosen up his tongue. Yeah? Sure. Fingerprint everything up here. The hall, the stairs, the corridor, the body there. Don't miss a bet. I've got to get that bird. I've got to get him. Yes, sir. Warden talking. Send the coroner here right away. Week of bread and water in the dark. Enjoy your bread and water? Yeah? Why, you won't have been here a week. Come on, get up. Get up! Get up! How do you like that cigar, Bob? Smells good, doesn't it? Have a cigarette. Yeah, that's all right. Go on. Go on, kid. Oh, 
no. Oh, isn't that too bad? Last match I had to. Yeah. Smoke tastes good after dinner, doesn't it, Bob? Especially after a good hot cup of coffee. Let's see, what do we have for dinner today? Oh, yes. Beef steaks smothered with onion, mashed potatoes, country gravy. Gleason's going too far, if you ask me. Yeah, and he's going out of here in a big way if the warden ever gets wise to some of the stuff he's pulling. You bet. On the level, Bob, you're a sight. Uh, I bet you itch, don't you? Any nice girl would be scared to see you now. Must be kind of depressing down here, especially when you don't have to stay. I know a kid that's got a parole waiting for him up on the warden's desk. He could be out of prison in an hour, eating swell food, too. How about it, Bob? Huh? How about it? Who killed Runch? I don't know. Who killed Runch? I don't know. Who killed Runch? Come on, let me have it. Who killed him? Try and get it. Who killed Runch? Come on, who killed Runch? Speak up, you rat. Speak up. Try and get it, you sick, fat with a bull. Yeah. You're gone, kid. That's the stuff. All right, Chris, lock him up. Another yap out of you, Tex, and I'll come in there, too. Ah, nuts. Now, now listen to me, Mr. Brady. I'm state's attorney for this district, and it's up to me to get some action. So far, there's been none. Now, I don't mind telling you that the situation's become intolerably embarrassing. Yeah? Yes, ever since this man was murdered, right here in your office, I've been under fire in the Metropolitan Press. Yeah? Well, it's not often that a young man gets a chance to crash into the city press like that. Yes, I appreciate that, Mr. Brady, but whether or not it's good publicity, I don't know. Anyway, I don't feel that I should take a chance. What with uh, an election coming up and... Yeah, yeah, I know. Now, there was a killing out here over a week ago. So far, there's been no inquest. The coroner's done his duty. He's been out here three times. We've sworn in a jury. Packed them out here in a bus and had to pack them back again. Each time you've asked for a postponement. You wouldn't let us see this fellow, Graham. You refused to testify yourself. All we know about the case is what comes out in the newspapers. Yeah, and that's not much. Not much? A man's dead. And somebody's got to pay. An eye for an eye. That's the basis and foundation of our criminal code, Mr. Brady. That's the law. Yeah? You're not telling me. I am telling you. You've got to do something and do it quick. Yeah? Radio. Here, I just came in a frank and friendly spirit and laid my cards right down on the table. Now, I ask you as man to man, what are you going to do? Nothing. Just what do you mean by that? Just exactly what I say. Well, I want to tell you that you can't get away with it. Not a minute longer. There'll be no more delay. There's been a murder committed. Well, there's going to be an inquest, a trial, and a penalty. That's the law in this state. I don't know what your motives are. Motive? Why, you young whelp. Why, Mr. Brady, all I mean is... No matter what you mean, you've said too much. Now, I'll do some talking. Now, don't you try to tell me how to run my job. I learned this game when you were in the cradle. I'm moving heaven and earth to find the bird that turned this trick. Now, give me a chance. Lay off, will you? You and your coroner and your inquest. What do you do? You'll only ball things up. I am only want to do my duty. I'm trying to serve law and justice. Justice? That's what I'm after, too. Justice. And that's what I'm going to get. The only thing that you'll do will be to indict an innocent boy. Now, lay off me, will you, and give me a chance. I'll work this thing out myself. Yeah, but when? How long will it take? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm very sorry, Mr. Brady, but you can't expect me to accept as vague an answer as that. Yeah? Well, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to report your unheard of conduct to the prison board and to the attorney general. I'm going to have an inquest here tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I'll have you called on a subpoena. Yeah, I guess you can do that. I 
Yes, you can. Yeah. That's the law, Mr. Brady. Good day. Fat head. Fat head. Jerry, who eats today? The kid, Graham. Yeah? Give me a spoon, will you? Sure. I see what you stuck in there. It was a knife. Yeah. You gotta take that out of there. You're liable to get me into trouble. You won't get caught. Why won't I get caught? Well, they're liable to trace that knife right back here again. They can't trace it back. It's a shoemaker's knife. I've had it ever since I was in the shop. Oh, I see. Well, I ain't toting any knives around until I know what it's all about. See? For Graham. Graham? Not me, Cluck. I wouldn't be a party Listen, or anything like The kid's been in the hole a week. He kept his trap shut. If he'd have squawked, he'd have been out long ago. He deserves a break, and I'm going to see that he gets it. Yeah, but what good is a knife to him down there? Don't you see, stupid? It's an out. A two way out. To end the torture oh, or. Oh, yeah. I see. You mean either him or Gleason, huh? Yeah, that's it. Shh. All right, Jerry. Yes, sir. Come on, let's go. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, Dad. It's like a breath of heaven to have you back here again. Take off your coat. McNamee, take Miss Mary's grips inside. The housekeeper will show you where. Yes, sir. Well, well. Come on, now. Tell your old man all about you. Hey, what's the matter? What have you done with Robert Graham, Dad? Who told you about him? What have you done with him? Now, don't you worry about things you don't know anything about. Everything's all right, or it's going to be. I want to know, Dad. And don't let the newspapers get your goat. I've been to the mat with them before. Yeah, I'll come out of this all right. Don't you worry about me. I'm not worrying about you, Dad. I'm worrying about him. Yeah? Why? For one reason, because you put him here. Who told you about that? Well, I know that's all. I've taken the trouble to find out everything about him. Yeah? Where is he? He's in the dungeon, Mary. What for? Technically, for shielding a murderer. Practically, to save his life, perhaps. What good is it to save a man if you destroy him while you're doing it? Yes, I've thought of that myself. Prisons are full of broken men, of broken minds and souls. What good is it to save a man for that? Well, he'd be better dead. Yes, I've thought of that too. That boy was clean and fine and straight. What will happen to him when you break him? It's all right, Mary. I see your point. I thought of all that stuff myself. But what am I going to do? His parole is laying here. It's taken me months to get it. I want to get him out of here. I want to turn him loose. But he's tied my hands. I can't. You can. You must. Yeah? Well, what would you do? I'd set him free tonight. Why, you're just a kid. You don't know anything about these things. I do. I do. I'd set him free, and then I'd fight for him. I'd get behind him and see him through. If he were free, he'd have a chance. He's done nothing wrong. He's only doing what he thinks is right. It's only what you think that matters. Yeah? A man like you could find a way to save him. Delays, disagreements, and whatnot. You know how those things are done. You've often told me of the things they've done to you. He'd be outside and free. He'd have a chance. You'd get him off. You know you would. Crazy, Mary. You know what they do to me for that? I tell you what they'd do. They'd bust me higher than a kite. I'm only hanging by a shoestring now. They're after me. They're only waiting for a chance. But if it's right... Right? Yeah? Right? You talk as though I'd committed a crime myself. I've done my duty all my life by the public and by the law. I'm not God. 
I didn't make things right or wrong. I didn't make the law. There's nothing on my head. I don't owe any man the scrap of future that's left to me. But, Dad... Now, now, Mary, you're crazy. You're just a child. You don't know anything about these things. I've done the best I could for them, and I'm done. I'm through. The law must take its course. No, you can't do that. You can't. Hey. It's gotten into you. What are you driving at? What's it all about? Well, I... Come on, now. Let's get down to cases. What's up? I... I love him, Dad. Yeah? Yeah? Is that on the level, Mary? How long has this been going on? Oh, it hasn't gone on. He's never said a word to me, but... I knew, Dad. Yeah? Oh, I'm sorry if this hurts you, but... I... It's all right, sweetheart. You can't help that. You're not a child. You know what you're doing. Well, I... I guess that's one thing the law doesn't cover. But... What will you do? Do? Well, there's only one answer to that, Mary. I'd turn the demons out of hell for you. Come on now, sweetheart. It's gonna be all right. We'll see him through, somehow, some way. Yeah, he'll never serve another day. We can help it. And I guess we can help it. Yeah. I guess we can. Some way. Come on, now. Chin up, little girl. Yes, Dad. <laughs> Warden talking. Where's Captain Gleason? He just went down to the dungeon, sir. Go down and tell him to bring up 25465 to my office. Right, sir. Thank you, Dad. All right, sweetheart. We'll get him out. We'll get him out. Some way. Send the knife down to Graham. Yeah? yeah? That guy? And Gleason just went down the dungeon, too. What are you going to do about it? Well, that kid don't take no rap for me. I'm going to keep an appointment. seen him. This means a dungeon for you. All right. Let's go. All right, come on, take him out. Come on, get out. Kind of tough waiting, isn't it, sweetheart? Yes, Dad. I wish they'd hurry. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I know how you feel. Trouble. It's in the dungeon. Dungeon? Oh! Wait here. Dad! 
No, wait here. Trust you, Brady. Here I come. Uh, you take care of me. Come on, fresh guy. I got an appointment with you. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, stay where you are. You can't get away with this kind of way. Stand back, fellow, or you'll lose your best guard. Go on, get back. Get back. Get back. Ah, you don't like it, do you, squealer? No more little runch when I give it to him. Lunch! You get away? Yes, I got lunch, Brady. No rat ever got away from me. You hear that, Gleason? Now tell them, Squealer. Tell them what happened. Tell them what you done to the kid, what you done to me about that glass of beer. Tell them why you're gonna die. Here he is, sweetheart. Bob. Oh, my dear. What have they done to you? I, I'm all right. I'm all right now. Dad, I'm so happy. Yeah. Well, that's the way things break sometimes. You got to take them the way they fall. Yeah. 